jigs tonight. One eightieth of an ounce, little bitty guys, on a size 10 hook. Gonna be tying those up and then I'm gonna move all the way up to the big old 164th ounce on a size eight sickle hook. I'm gonna tie some of these. And then if we get all those tied at the very end, I've got some eighth ounce, um, some of my bleeding shad colored uh, heads painted up. We'll tie those at the very end if we get there. But tying the tiny tonight, so y'all hang out. Be sure you hit the like button for me. Even if you're watching this on replay, if you would, please hit the like. It really helps us out. And we will um, get the tie in here, so. You gave me a hoe, yeah? Thank you, buddy. Hope everybody has had a good Saturday. It's been a good Saturday here for us in the middle of nowhere. Tie some jigs tonight. Hey, mom, welcome in, welcome in. You're the first one up in here, I believe. Sorry if I got confusing with all the goofy stuff with the EIN numbers and whatever. It just kind of, I just want to make sure if y'all wanted to be covered, you could be. First time, yeah, for sure. We learned um, from having to do it, so... And like I said, they may not even require it or ask for it, so who knows? You never know till the event's over. You might be able to get out of there in time and not even have to worry about it. All right. So the first thing I'm tying is just a small little brown, really natural colored buck, bucktail jig. It's actually a miniature version of the, yeah, exactly. And we've done that before too, so, I mean, that works. Tie a uh, little miniature version of the gold bug that we use so much. What's up there, Rocco? Hey, Lucky 13. All the stargazers are gone, yep. Yeah, I believe they're all gone. Hopefully the internet will be better tonight. Hi and bye. All right, Rocco. I appreciate it, man. Hit the old like button for me if you would. Sure appreciate that. Yeah, I think all the stargazers are gone. Man, that eclipse was a super, super cool experience, though. I definitely understand the hype and why everybody would drive so far because it really was cool turkey season open today learned a lot those <laughs> back at it tomorrow heck yeah well good luck rocco hope you uh hope you find you one or however your limit is out there Yeah. Oh, tough, tough lessons. Those are not the fun ones, but they're definitely the ones that you'll remember. It did really get dark, yeah. I posted a, um, a time lapse on our channel and then I kind of, I went and picked the camera up and I panned around the yard and you can see kind of how dark it was. It wasn't like absolutely pitch black darkness, but it was really, you know, well after sunset dusk. It, it was really cool. 
<laughs> Patience is very hard to learn, yep. I've learned too, if you ever uh, want patience and a lot of times life will put you in positions to where you just have to be patient to help you learn it. I know I, I wanted patience and wanted to learn to be patient and I prayed about it. And it felt like everywhere I went, I was put into scenarios that I had to be patient. Like, kind of learned the lesson to... <laughs> I met Zoe, yeah. It did get pretty dark, though. It was cool. Two minutes too early. Oh, man. A little bitty jig. It's going to be a little bitty bluegill. little bluegill jig. Nothing crazy. Um, had somebody that wants just something to... I can talk to you. I was talking to the live stream. People, yeah. Had somebody that ordered these that wants to just be able to take them to the creek and perch jerk. So, so well, we can do that. What's up, 351? Welcome in, man. Thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Tying some tiny stuff tonight. Got 180th ounce. Little bitty jigs. Hey, Dylan. Nene said hi. Hi, He said hi, Nene. <laughs> He's about to eat some pizza. They're sitting down for dinner, so. I wolfed my pizza down, so I've, I've done eight. <clears throat> Oh, hey, Corey. Welcome in, my friend. Is Corey your friend? Corey is my friend. Is he your friend? He's my friend, too. Dylan's a he my friend, too. And what was Corey's son's name? Do you remember, Dylan? Curtis. Curtis, that's right. He remembers. We'll probably see them again next year. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, HJKH? Welcome in, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming in here tonight. Add you as a standard mod. He does. He remembers everything. He's crazy. Crazy, his memory. Hey, them. Killing those largemouth bass. Yes, she does. <coughs> she caught one today. Yep. No, we didn't film nothing today. We was just out fun fishing. Hope everybody's had a good Saturday. What do you do? What do you do? It is crawl colored. Oh, crawfish colored. Actually, if you want to be real technical, it's called Louisiana mud bug is the name of the color of the chenille. Yeah, it is. Um, We're tying some quarry size stuff tonight. We finally got this color put up on our website as well. It's called um, gold bug is the name of this color option on our website with the brown bucktail 
mud bug chenille and the gold head. We only have it um, in quarter ounce, eighth ounce, thir 32nd, and 16th. Yeah, there's only three, four sizes. We have it offered in on our website right now. We're going to have a micro section eventually try to have some sort of... Yeah, we're going to make some creek fishing kits, some little like pocket, like that box that I gave you, Corey. It's like a little, that little teal tackle box. We've got an abundance of those. We're able to get cheap, cheap enough um, that we're going to offer like a creek or some sort of like pocket kit. I can flip this around. You can see it a little better on that rear facing camera. Yeah. This is some brown bucktail. A gold flash and gold head. That gets eight for sure. It's a good, uh, it's been a really good color pattern. And actually, um, yeah, I'll make a bunch of, I hope if we end up doing that event, we'll have, um, I don't know, it's what, a month and a half away? I would like to have a couple hundred of each size and have the kits and everything. The, I think the fishing kits would sell good for the events. I know they do, yeah. They're 20 bucks a piece, just super easy price point. And we, um, we've had them before and sell good, do I? Yeah, we've sold them. Yeah. We've sold them at events before. We had them at the Bigfoot Festival, which that's another really great event. It'll be the first weekend of October over in Honubby, Oklahoma. Kid ones, yeah. What's up, HJKAs? Yeah. Um, what would I use that jig for? So that is one sixty four or one eightieth of an ounce on a size ten hook. It's about an inch long bait, super small, crappie, if they're shallow enough to you be patient enough to let this fall to them, it's going to sink really, really slowly. They cannot stand stuff like this being anywhere around them, and they're going to eat it. Um, obviously, you're not going to fish with this if they're 20 foot deep. If you do, what I do a lot of times is get like an eighth ounce jig and put this on the line about a foot or 18 inches above it. That way you still have a jig and you're not just using like a drop shot weight. So you still have a big profile bait at the bottom that can pull it down. And then you've got this little profile up top. If they're not wanting to chase something so big, you've still got a jig in their face that they'll eat. Um, bluegill, man, at the ponds or creeks, a little jig like that um, tears them up at the at the creek. Like today we stopped at the, um, at our local college, which is a pretty like heavily pressured little pond. And I probably caught eight or 10 crappie just casting a little 80th ounce or 64th ounce actually jig um, off the bank mm -hmm. and I throw that on a seven foot six inch rod with two pound line so it's not much not heavy line at all nothing crazy you're not throwing it on an eight pound test what's up Carney man I appreciate it but it's a it's a good time my <laughs> mad skills I appreciate it man I really do I try to um I do the best I can for sure, especially on the jigs that I sell out to people. Um, we try to do a good job, so try to help people catch fish, man. That's what it's about. So I'm just doing small stuff tonight, but here's a little bit of you know, some stuff I do. A little bigger bucktail. That's a, a quarter ounce on a three aught. You know, little swim jig, bucktail swim jig, really super natural shad colored jig 
on a casting style head. And I've got all sorts of colors, man. Anything y'all could want. Uh, some purple. Um, it's my bladed jigs. We call them a Bambi blade. It's like a chatterbait. Essentially, hits about like a jackhammer does underwater. Um, there's still a barb under there if you want to run a trailer on it. I, I leave a barb underneath that hair so you can still push a trailer up on it. Make all kinds of stuff. It's fun. We have a good time. You um, Weightless stuff for streamers for fly fishing. About what, be? Oh yeah, I'm looking at getting a new jig mold. It would be, I could tie to it some, but it's going to be more geared towards just like our terminal tackle side of things, to where we pour also like a wide gap or an extra wide gap um, Ned rig head for like rigging soft plastics and stuff. We're looking at rigging up like a. Uh, just kind of a minnow style head profile for, um, Sophie loves using like a Kytec, some kind of, oh yeah, 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 it would be, it would be good just for like a, you know, j swim bait jig head, paddle tail jig head, it's fun, I have a good time, we do this every Friday night, Saturday night usually. Like the I like, I think the ones I like are like three and a half inch. Yeah. Do they make smaller ones though? Oh, yeah. They've got like down to one inch paddle tails. Really? Oh, yeah. What's up, Ken? I've not tried to make any micro spinner baits yet, no. So I pour all of my own lead. I do all my own powder coating and everything. And I just do not have any spinner bait molds yet. Um, yet, of course, being the key word... But right now I'm more geared towards uh, crappie and panfish and bass and walleye, kind of my target species right now. Um, bass, I've got swim jigs, I've got arky style jigs for bottom contact fishing. I've got, uh, like I said, those bladed jigs. And then if you're into like the Domeki rig stuff with forward facing sonar, I build a lot of like oh, little natural colored little minnows. I don't know, buddy. That's what I'm there. That's one of my Arky jigs, stand up jigs on the bottom. I use a, I pour them on a Victory. Every single product I use, um, Victory hooks on. I've still got some uh, crappie jigs that I'm working on using up. I don't know where my stuff's at. Anywho. Dylan likes to move stuff around. I even, you know, tie uh, hackle feathers onto if you want any feathered treble hooks, whatever. We can pretty much do it if you can think about it. If you've seen it done or whatever, we could pretty much, pretty much do it. That's what I'm talking about more, the Domeki rig style fishing. Clear water stuff. See that electric shad on the head? That jig head's got a lot of crazy flash in it. And I put a lot of flash down the tail. Tie random um, stand up jigs like that. If I can get it to focus again. Anywho, jig's so nice. I'm afraid to use them where it's really snaggy. Oh man, 
Don't be afraid to use them. I can always make more if you lose lose those. Yeah, we uh we can always make more. Anyway, let's get back to doing what I was doing here. So we got those three. Um, we're all the same. So now I've got another 180th here. Oh, yeah, Ken. I can always make more, buddy. There's uh, got some orange, three orange ones. Then I've got three of this color, which is dragonfly. And it's a really pretty head color. It's like a teal. Like a teal, but it's got glitter and stuff in it. I always have my eyes clear as well. You'll have, um, you'll never get a jig from me that your eyes are clogged up, which is kind of like, no, oh, not that big of a deal. You can just poke them out. It's a huge deal to me. It drives me nuts to be sitting out there with another hook, trying to poke them up, trying to not get your, then you're dulling your other hooks and it's just a waste of time. It's a waste of everybody's time. I ain't for it, so. Let's get some uh, orange thread, maybe. Just make these a little resin body. These are pretty sweet jigs as well. Put the chenille up. I'm also gonna put this bucktail up for a second. Got some brown marabou here. This will be another one that'll be good for the old. Uh, All right, HJKH. Yeah, man, have a good night. Thanks for stopping in, man. I appreciate it a lot. You're welcome up in here anytime. Like I said, I usually go live on Saturday nights just doing exactly this, just talking and tying and hanging out. Nothing too crazy. It never gets rowdy in my lives. Knock on wood, but we don't have any trolls or none of that mess coming here, so we've always been pretty fortunate. What's up, Glacier Shark? Welcome in, welcome in. Tiny jigs are good, yes sir. It's all I've been throwing lately. I can't stop throwing them. I keep thinking, oh, you know, let I'm gonna go back to a wacky rig, or go back to something big, and try to catch something, you know. Try to catch something bigger, and then I go right back to Go right back to these tiny things. <laughs> good dude doing good things. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it, man. It's never nothing crazy. Um, like I said, I don't like excitement. I don't like, I definitely, we don't do drama or none of that mess. So it's just always chill. Well, chill environment. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. This is sorry. So I just write down this Christmas book. It says I am Max. It's based on the Dr. Seuss's How the Alice and the Grinch Stole Christmas. Right. And I opened the page. I said, what's the dog's name? He went Frank. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Daggum, that ain't his name, Dylan. No, that's not his name. Who lives in a cave? The Grinch. Oh, Grinch. I've let this roll and now I can't get it to stop rolling. Grinchy boy and Maximilian. What's wrong with the Grinch? What's the Grinch? Uh, what do you use to sharpen hooks? Is there a kit? I lost a nice bass today because of my chatterbait. 
Huckle's Dole. Oh man, um, they sell, it looks like, um, almost like a knife sharpener. It looks like a whetstone kind of, and it has a groove down the middle. And you can definitely look up, just Google like hook sharpener, and it'll pull them right up. Hey, uh, not long, Jeff Rowe, no, I've been here like 25 minutes. I'm going to take this back apart and redo it. Can't get it to quit spinning. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can find them online for sure. I was wondering about that thread being too big. I tried to use a 240. 240 denier is way too thick. So I'm going to have to go, go smaller. Um, personally using Edgemate, the pocket sharpener. Code of file with a hook groove in it. There you go. Nice. All right, that held on a lot better. I never use that um, 240 denier stuff hardly ever anymore. So I thought maybe I could get away with using it since I'm making this a resin body, but it was spinning around on me. Vow to sharpen your hooks regularly. Yeah, for sure. Good, good sharp hook makes a difference. Um, like I, I use the victory hooks on all this stuff and they're crazy sharp. I pour all my lead and everything. So I'm looking at every single hook before I pour it, you know. I know they're all good good hooks. These are pretty cool little jigs, so they look like a jelly bean. Get it dripped down just a little bit. There we go. Check it out, yeah. No edge, mate. Little, looks like a jelly bean. I'm zoomed in just a little bit too much. There we go. That UV resin body is just a, looks like glass, keeps it smooth. And also that tapered body increases hookups as well because it keeps the material away from the shank of the hook, but from the shank to the point. Helps that gap stay a little bit. mesmerized i appreciate it i'm glad you're here yeah we have fun man we uh i try to do like i'm <sighs> try to do different things you know um i'll tie like two or three of the same jig but i don't want to sit here and tie 50 jigs the same while i'm live because really nobody wants to sit here i don't blame you there's no way i'm gonna sit through and watch um you know, 50 jigs be tied of the same. Hey, welcome in, welcome in. Tournament winning jigs.
We hadn't won it. We just got second. We was close. We went and caught a bunch of uh, bunch of fish at the college pond today. That was good news. Oh, yes, yeah, that was awesome. Our, the co-angler that we sponsor um, for the LBAA, the Lady Bass Anglers Association, she won first place this weekend on um, Bull Shoals up in northern Arkansas. No, we didn't let Dylan fish. He was just running around. He was drumming on the lights, and him and Mama went over and looked at the tank. You remember the tank, buddy? Yeah, he said, no, he didn't fish. He was just running around. Carnyman, what I, all this is just a ultraviolet cure UV resin. This is a UV flashlight, ultraviolet flashlight. Hit that resin with that flashlight. I have to keep it spinning so that it doesn't drip. But um, once you hit it with that light for a few seconds, it hardens up. It hardens up good. And then another like, you know, eight, ten hours out in the sun, it'll go ahead and bake it to where it is. Because the sun is ultraviolet as well. Obviously not as intense as this, but um, I don't want to go through the batteries of. You can kind of see it against my hand, that marabou, those feathers, and then that, um, that resin body. It just looks like a jelly bean. I mean, that's pretty much what what I intend for them to look like, just kind of a, but it's hard. I mean, it's like glass already. Zoom out so y'all don't have to look so closely at my nasty fingers, but. Like I said, these are a 180th ounce. Super, super tiny. That's the head of it compared to a 1 8th ounce, like a standard eighth ounce, you know, Mr. Twister, whatever you grab off the shelf at Walmart, eighth ounce jig compared to the head of a 180th ounce. Pretty insane, the difference. You definitely gotta throw that on light gear, but um, they tear some fish up. And taking an ultralight down to the creek with like some two or four pound line, it's just the funnest thing ever, so. Build one more of those, and then we'll swap over and tie something that looks almost like a minnow or something kinda you know, for some clear water. This is gonna be a good dirty water jig. That dark brown will contrast good against mud and then um, also the orange, obviously, just being a bright color. But I just use blood quill, marabou, and then uh, get it sized about how much I want off of there where the tail's not just too awfully long. You know, you don't want, you don't want that much feather sticking past your hook. You know what I mean? So I kind of bunch that stuff together and keep the tips all pulled up and get about how much I want about the length of the hook. And then another half or so, you know, about how much I like. You can either tie it down and then cut it. I prefer just to go ahead and cut it off now, just to have those ends good and square. 
Then you just light, loop it loose and cinch it down. And then wrap it down. I stop the body of my thread on these at least at the point of the hook, if not just a wrap or two before I get there. Make sure it's all covered up good. I put a few less wraps at the bottom and a few more up towards the head to kind of build up and make like a tapered sort of body for that resin to coat. Whip finish, I always do five. I don't know why. Three holds it, seven holds it. I just like five. Pull it up, then I'll put that resin on. Just kind of get it all spread out evenly. Really coat the threads good. Keep it turning. Hit it with that light. That's it. It's good and dry and hard and ready to rock. I'll flip it around to the other side. It's a lot clearer on this side, but I can't see chat, so. There you go. Neat little jig, pretty cool. Papa will be here in a few minutes. Oh yeah. Waiting on Mama to get home from bingo, I imagine. That one's that firefly color head. End of that feather is kind of, uh, we can make another jig with it, I guess, later. Money, <laughs> I appreciate it. That's money, dude. It's old stale cracker, dude. Put that on the crack, <laughs> All right. I got a little box of, box of just random chenilles that I've bought just for this, just random little orders of stuff. I've got one, I need gray or silver or white. That silver one might be cool. It's kind of a braided rope. That might be pretty sweet. Let's see what else we can find in here. We can make a dubbing loop and spin some up and kind of make our own, but it's kind of a lot of work for a few little a few little jigs for no reason. I know the waters that these are going to to fish, so. I kind of know what uh, what'll work out there where they're gonna be at. And we'll stick with that gray. Yeah. I've got the synthetic, synthetic material. No, I'm gonna make them, make them bucktail, deer tail, just a normal bucktail. Uh, swap my head thread color here to a gray. Gray. There's a better one. What's going on there, Captain. Mr. Ted? Captain. 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 Hey, y'all. <laughs> I love that guy. Yeah, he's cool for sure. Hey, Mamma, uh, Papa, Mamma tore him up at bingo. That's what I'm talking about. Bingo. Went out there. That's good. I'm glad. Dang them, no. Don't give them old women no slack out there at bingo. Definitely don't feel bad about going out there and taking their money from them. I think it's funny. I love it. I'm glad she had a good night.
put my lid back on my resin before I forget. Oh, yeah. We was heading home this evening, and um, there was a cop car kind of beside us on the four lane, and then there was a truck in front of us with no license plate. I was like, uh oh. And then the cop sped up, got over in front of us, and I told Sophie, I was like, he's about to, he about to pull this dude over. Sure enough, old blue lights come on. I'm like, oh. Well, then he panicked. He panicked and hit the curb. Dude panics and hits the curb. In his no license plate, mid '90s model GMC truck, like well, yeah, he's if he wasn't gonna get searched, he is now. But April twentieth for the bait makers ball. Um, I've got a tournament out of state, a bass tournament out of state that day, Ted. What is it? The bait makers ball he's wanting to do. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yep, Papa. Um, depending on what time you're wanting to do it, I don't know what time I'm going to be back home. But I'm going to be exhausted after that tournament anyway because we got to get up early and leave and drive out of, like I said, it's over in Oklahoma, so. Yeah, Ted's wanting me to go live with a bunch of other bait makers one night and do, or several nights, on each other's channels for this thing called a bait maker's ball that he's wanting to do. Okay. And just all just kind of April 20th. Oh, okay. There's no way. That's why I told him we'd be, um, I got that tournament that day. Hey, Terry, welcome in, welcome in. Terry who? Terry Wade. I don't think you know him. I don't know him. <laughs> I'm doing a Spider Man fun book. Other than just in here. I mean, I know him from in here, but. Did you hear what I said? You're doing a Spider Man fun book. Yep. Oh, I'm doing a word search. Are you having fun doing it? Intelligence. Things are, things are good down south. They're, uh, Everything's going good. We made it through the eclipse, so that was that was good. Um, it's all good. Making some little bitty jigs for. We had us an order. Um, for nine jigs that will be good at the creek. So we're tying some tiny little, they said they're just going perch jerking. They don't need nothing crazy special, just something to catch some little sunfish and bring them down to the creek. So I said, I got you. Survived eclipse north of the border, yep. Was you, was, uh, you're part of, you're in Canada, I believe, right? Was you in, um, totality also? We were in the path of totality, so it was pretty cool. Hey. <laughs> Made it through the eclipse, yeah. yeah. Ontario, that's yeah. right. Okay, cool. <laughs> made your belly laugh. Yeah, we made it. The world didn't end, and the rapture didn't happen, and I don't know what all else was supposed to happen, but the horses didn't appear or what all. It was minimal. Oh, okay, yeah. We were in totality, so it was pretty, it was really an awesome experience. I definitely, I mean, I did not regret, you know, sitting outside and watching it, but... Huh? 
It was super cool. It all looked cool standing out in the yard and lawn chairs. Yeah, it looked like movie theater 3D glasses staring up at the sun for four hours. Four oh, we didn't. Hours. We didn't look at it that long, but the whole the whole thing was about a three hour ordeal, wasn't it? That'll be a good little good little jig for clear water. If the water's clear when they're going. Bless you. There's a little gray body. That white bucktail, some silver flash, and then uh the little dragonfly colored head. Pretty neat little jig. Build um Build a couple more of those. Dylan, where are you going? No, 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 no. no. What's he doing? Daddy's on the line. Don't turn the light on. Hey, over here, buddy. She wants you to turn the fan off. You know where the fan switch is at? Right behind the vacuum, right there. Where the vacuum's. Right there. Other side. See the switch in the middle that's up? Turn it down. Next one. Turn it down. Perfect. Walk away. Nope. Just like that. Just leave it. You got it. All right. You got it. It's slowing down. Yep. Thank you, buddy. Piper. Peter Parker, oh. I think this word is Parker. Oh, I already figured it out. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm just marking this thing. Hung out with my daughter on campus at University of Oklahoma. Their astronomy majors threw an eclipse party. I was like, free burger? Sure, I'll put glasses on and take a nap. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's awesome. I, I don't blame you. It was a good time, for sure. Definitely a unique experience. We'll be, I'll be 47 the next time it happens. Yep, Sophie says she'll be 47 the next time it happens. And the next one that happens in 2045 that co covers a large part running from west to east um, through kind of the, about halfway through the United States, starting in California and going to Florida, we're dead center totality again, which is nuts. I mean, it's like a giant X across the map that we're still this last one kind of went northeast and then this one coming you know from west to east we're dead center totality again right here in the middle of nowhere hey what's up travis Matt Lucky Laugh, Nene, 351 Thump, Sophie Ken, Terry, Off the Hook, Papa, and everybody. I got, oh no, I haven't yet. I was going to say, I got to get over there and watch your video with your crappie fishing, but I forgot it's a premiere for Tuesday, I think. What? <coughs> I believe it was Tuesday. <laughs> What's up, Wild Finn? Big Malone premiering that crappie smackdown he just him he got on this weekend. I'm gonna be there for it. <laughs> There's my favorite Cajun. <laughs> favorite Cajun from nowhere around what's up extreme trout 
Adam, how you been, man? I hadn't seen you in a while. I don't know if I haven't been on YouTube or you haven't been on YouTube or what's been going on, but everybody's been uh, been busy, man. I feel like real life's been hectic. What? Huh? Been hunting. That's what I'm talking about. Turkey season? Not been able to do anything. It's been turkey season out there. Herding. Oh, dude. Herding. My bad. I hate you been hurting, man. You're too young to be hurting. Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Central Time. I'll be there, bud. For sure. I'll be at work at four, but I'll uh, I'll be in there at the premiere, and if I miss something, I'll definitely go back and watch it when I get home. It's gonna be real hectic around July the 9th. Oh yeah. Yeah, life's gonna get real crazy July the 9th. Whenever new baby gets here. What are you saying about the new baby? I said, I said, I feel like life's been hectic lately. We've just been busy. Fishing and doing tournaments and all kinds of stuff. And then mom said life's going to get real hectic around July the 9th. You, you have to take breaks. Yeah. Take breaks. Yeah. 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 Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? <laughs> well, I'm going to see section, mate. Oh, honey. I'm going to live stream the from the hospital to, Tuesday night. Another little jig. Definitely my best day of fishing this year. Probably last year, too. <laughs> yeah, man. I've been missing you, Adam. I thought... uh. I thought I hadn't been seeing you popping up. Laying down, trying to get better. Dang it. Only person I asked how I've been, man. I appreciate it. No doubt. <laughs> now you laughed out loud. That vice is portable. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take this thing to the bay. Yeah. I'll toss some jigs from the hospital. No. She ain't laughing. She didn't think it was near as funny as we did. Well, Dustin Connell is a loser. <laughs> Dustin Connell is a loser? He's number six now. Dustin Connell won $300,000 a couple weeks ago. I think he's fine. But he's lacking. He's number six at 43 pounds. He just had a new baby. What's up, Domingo? Jacob Wheeler's got 79 pounds for 25 feet. Is he leading? Yep. Jacob Wheeler's leading? Drew Gill. Drew Gill is a good name for a fisherman. They're neck and neck. 79 13 for 25 fish. And Drew's got <laughs> 66 for 25 fish. I'll get better. I'm ready to fish. Heck yeah. That may be just what you need, man. Get out there and sit on the riverbank and take you a nice, comfortable chair. Leave the camera at the house and just unwind. You know what I mean? It definitely helps out a lot, de-stressing, being out there. But listen to your wife. If she isn't smiling, she's for real. Yeah. <coughs> she wasn't smiling. <laughs> she said, does it look like I think that that was funny? She was like, not moved. <laughs> yeah. All right, get one more piece of silver flash here. Are you on live stream, babe? Mm -hmm. I tried to fish, wasn't the best idea. I was hurting worse, just can't do it. Dang, man. 
I don't know. I hate that. Whatever's going on, I hate it. So be it. I like dominoes. I said, Sophie, I, I laughed at you saying I like dominoes. Might need you here so Matthew can live stream. <laughs> I guarantee you if these live streams made money, it'd be a whole different... Babe, I'm having a baby. What? They get some views. You're not filming me. <laughs> Dylan, what are you doing? You having fun? Yes. What are you playing with? With those nails? Who got you that? What? Nene? Or was that Aunt Angie? I think Aunt Angie may have got may have got you that one, bud. What is it? The little thing that he hammers the The wooden thing with the same on it? Yeah. Yeah, Aunt Angie wants it. Papa John's. We don't got no Papa John's or Domino's. We've got a Pizza Hut. We've got Simple Simon's, which is an extremely local. I was about to say, I don't think that Simple yeah. Simon's is anywhere else. They've got like two chain, two stores. One like in the town we're from, and then another one just a few miles out of town. Somebody sends a friend request. I don't know who that would, who that was. Exactly. That's why I thought it was weird. All right, young. One more last jig there. All right, now the fun ones. Swap over to the sixty-fourth ounce on these sickle hooks. I got a lot more room to do some stuff here on these. I'm going to put some rubber legs on a couple and I'm just going to mess around. These are actually my Mustad, those Mustad skipjack hooks. And I've got like a thousand of these that I'm going to, um, about to just start just cranking out for like all my vendor events and stuff. Save those victories until I get the, uh, all the Mustads burn up, but they're still a good hook. I've caught a ton of fish on them. Actually, they're stronger as far as being able to stra straighten them out wise than the Victories are. The Victories are super light wire. Not that they're a weak hook, but they're just such a light wire hook that, and they're so insanely sharp that um, they straighten out, you know, if you hook on something. If, you, if you're using like six pound line and you hook up your crappie jig or 64th ounce crappie jig you're going to straighten that wire out so i got some coffee colored chenille i need to swap back to my brown thread i'm done with the order the jigs for that order so now we can play around with whatever as long as i make them in sets of three i'll sell them in sets of three on our facebook page if you're not following us there you can follow rock creek bait company that right there on the hat on um on Facebook, I'll try to sell some jigs off on there. I'm gonna start just selling off the, uh, all these live stream jigs that I tie. They're just kind of random batches. I'll try to sell them off to uh, for a pretty good price. Was the Easter Bunny good to the little guy? Dylan, did you have a good Easter? What was your favorite part? He like blue because you're a boy? Did you get any candy? 
Did you learn anything about Jesus? No. You was playing with Baba at church, so you wasn't learning about Jesus? <laughs> so he said, ain't that the truth. Yeah, he said he didn't learn nothing about Jesus because he plays with Baba at church. <laughs> he did, yeah. He had a good, uh, any green and purple. Oh, I can do it if it's cool with you, if it has a um, gold head. As long as you're, that's all the colors I've got tonight. Just for this live stream, green, purple. Do some purple bucktail and green body or mix them up. Pretty good haul. Baba Lola and Nini. Oh, yeah. Made out like a bandit. Yeah, he did. He's a mess. Dylan, you stank. I flew to Cuba on Good Friday. Awesome. Took my wife on her honeymoon after being married 24 years. No, I'm not cold. Babe, you're eating ice, crunching ice right now. <laughs> She's like, I'm freezing. Are you not cold? No. Just throwing out some colors. Oh, I got you. It's awesome. Made out like a bandit, yep. I just chopped up a piece of ice in my chair. I don't know where it went. It'll melt. Yeah. Haven't wet those jigs yet, but they will be next week. Awesome. I was wondering today while I was painting these little ones, I was like, I wonder if Papa and Mama got those other ones. Good deal. I look forward to uh look forward to. We all gonna have to get a side hustle when Levi gets here. Oh, I know it. They ought to be good, Papa. They ought to. They ought to catch some. Especially at at a, at the pond. I mean that. That ought to work, work good. I'm freezing. You're freezing? Yes. I try to eat Mama's ice, but, but if I eat Mama's ice, I will freeze. It's pretty cold. Want to stop by, hang out for a little bit. I'm going to call it a night. All right, good night, Adam. Dude, I appreciate it. Hope you get to feeling better, man. Uh, I'll be watching for some videos or update or whatever. But most importantly, just hopefully, uh, hopefully you get to feeling better soon, man. I appreciate you hanging out tonight. And we'll see you on the next one. So I got this next weekend, I have another bass tournament. It's going to be me and um, one of the one of my friends, our friends at church, invited me to fish with him. It's kind of the same format as the tournament that Sophie and I just fished that we ended up second place in. It's just on another lake. It's on a different lake over in Oklahoma that I've actually never fished. So it's going to be interesting um, to kind of, I've been studying maps. I've been studying Navionics as a chart viewer online. You can study water depths and kind of the topography of the bottom of the lake. I've got us some spots set where I think they're going to be at for the spawn. If the water conditions are right, I think we'll catch them. Um, not sure yet if we're going to video it just because, you know, it's not just me or me and Sophie. I don't know if we're going to. I'll have to ask and see if he wants to be a part of a video or not. 
appreciate it. it means a lot. Yeah, man, for sure. I'm excited either way, um, and I'll let y'all know how how we do. But at the tournament, whether I film it or not, but are, are all um, bullets the same size? No. They got different size bullet seats. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now they've got different shapes and everything. jig here be good it's a little bit heavier than the last ones that we tied that's a 164th ounce yeah. who are you talking to you on who are you on the phone with oh, okay this is some little pieces of gold flash black and black and a tan body and that gold Is that from Walmart? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I think that's the guy that wants to be your mom. Yeah. Don't fucking be surprised about that. Okay. Yeah. From, from the brows? I guess. But yeah. Are friends? Are kind of friends? Are we, are we friends? Yes. We are? Yes. Oh. I'm so glad. What are you doing, boy? <laughs> what are you doing? On the phone? Yes. All right. What's he saying? Mom? Yeah. He telling you jokes? Oh, he told you the why is the chicken so funny? What did he say? Why is the chicken so funny? Because. That's a good joke. Neat. Oh yeah. Thank you. That is funny. It never gets old. Ever tie a dragonfly looking jig? dragonfly i have never done it but we sure can we can try it dragonfly i can grab a hook and we can try i've even got black felt and uh some silly legs and all kinds of stuff we could try to make it look somewhat decent Dragonfly looking jig. Um, check this out. There's like a one night we were messing around. I've done some bugs with skirt material. Nice. We we're messing around and tried to tie like a spider out of black bucktail. It's got all the legs. And then we've got a rat. 
I've tried to tie a Christmas tree. I tried to make a Christmas tree and it did not turn out well. That little <laughs> thing was a, that little thing was horrible. But this one right here, I'm pretty proud of. Check this mouse, this mouse out. A mouse? Yep. Little top water floating deer hair mouse. Yep, I think they see it. Can I see? Sam Mouse? Here, it's right here, bud. And what is it? Little. Little mouse. You want to see? Can I see? Did you know that the iPhone 11 is 6.1 inch? What's on my lips? I don't know. Probably pizza. It is pizza. It is pizza? Mm -hmm. Can you show them your teeth? You, did you brush your teeth yet tonight? Huh? No, no, no. No, I have you haven't? Is this what? It's not. Can you bring me a Dr. Pepper? Can I have some of that? Yeah. What is it? Very, very little bit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh. Okay. It's mostly just ice melt. Well, <laughs> Bye. She's addicted to like Sonic ice, which that's like an our our Sonic here in that's town. Sonic, if you want to live off a wish. Yeah, that's like our wish Sonic. No, it's I think it's better than Sonic. No, they got, their food is better. Yeah. They got, they got more American favorite foods. Yeah. Where Sonic is like cheeseburgers and hot dogs. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see. Yay, there he is. Cute the mouse. Yeah. Can't wait till all three of them boys are getting in trouble. Oh, yeah, we're going to. Your dad said, I can't wait till all three of them boys are getting in trouble. Talking about me and Dylan and Levi. Am I going to let you pour that Dr. Pepper into that cup? No. Just, just leave it right there. Thank you. You're not going to pour it, though, okay? Are you going to pour it? I'll pour it, yes, sir. Why? Because you'll make a mess. Dad, Dad said I can't pour it. Oh, well, I'm not even letting you help. Oh, did you tell him I would let him help? Did Mama... I figured you might You want to try? But if he messes up, it's going to coat this jig table. Another jig there. Coat that jig, that jig table. Play-Doh table. Play-Doh table? It's not a Play-Doh table. Is that Play-Doh table? Play-Doh table's down there. Down Chunder. This is a jig table. This is the jiggy. Very nice. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it. Yeah, there's ice in there. There is ice? Yes. I smell it. You smell the ice? No, there's What does the ice smell like? It smells like old ice. It smells like old ice. Yes. All right. Here, help me pour it. Ready? Mm-hmm. You ain't seen the fizz on Dr. Pepper yet. All right, it held it. Thank you, buddy. Great job. That was... You have some? No. Because it's way too late for Dylan to drink dark pepper.
What? No. All right. What? I was just looking at you. I was saying if you was watching. There for a while, I had like a burr on the inside of my bobbin that was cutting my thread. But I guess I've just used this bobbin enough now that it's starting to get worn. It's worn it back to smooth because I haven't... Knock on wood, now I'll cut thread. Knock on wood. But I haven't been cutting thread lately. But now that I said that, I probably will cut it as I'm wrapping this up. Who? Me? I think it's just pregnancy. It's trying to come out. Is it? Probably. Pregnancy's so weird. Here in Oklahoma around July, there are blue and white bodied dragonflies. The bass literally fly out of the water to eat them. Ooh. Blue and white body. I think we could have, get something... I have to find a picture of something. If I can find a picture of it, I think I can get pretty close. I haven't been doing much time recently. Packed all my stuff last Saturday and hit the trade lot. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's so much fun to go do stuff like that. Any kind of like setting up a booth and just, because anyone who approaches your booth pretty much likes to fish. So it's super easy to strike up conversation and talk to people. Unless it's a 60-year-old woman who thinks you're selling earrings. Now, we've had the old women who thinks that we're selling earrings come up to ours. So... Yeah. Which I told her she could put these in her ear holes it would just be hard to get them out Daddy, night, night. night night you going night night buddy yeah. ready to go night night for real yeah. well definitely all the extra people put strain on our wi-fi or our internet last week because knock on wood again haven't had no issues this weekend which is nice because that is super frustrating. <laughs> yeah, with the earrings. I told her she could put them in. Wouldn't be no problem going in. It's just the coming out would be be interesting, but. Up to her, whatever floats her boat.
All right, purple one. Purple and chartreuse. I think there's more people in town than we realized. Yeah, yeah. I didn't ever see them for sure, so it wasn't. There wasn't no hundred thousand like they thought, but. Let's see. Green. Yeah. They said they were from Virginia. Nice. They had a great time. They would come back. Ain't no use, that's right. Get more people in town. <laughs> Grab the chartreuse, yes sir. Yeah, I don't I don't think there was. Purple. so cold. Get off of me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Dylan's feet are cold? Yes, I don't know. Yeah, his feet are chilly. What's the thermostat say it is in here? 71? I'm comfortable, but... Let's see what this looks like with a UV resin. Purple tail with a green body. Kinda looks like the Joker. Isn't the Joker green and purple? Just YouTube videos, Carnyman, yeah. Um, started out with a way different style vice. So the original vice I had was just a, um, literally a, uh, it's in like a little wooden box. It's on Amazon. It's called a Colorado Anglers all-in-one like fly tying kit. So I got it um, for my birthday. Um, started out with it, tying a few jigs, and then tied a few using different materials like pipe cleaners and stuff, just random stuff, playing, started taking them to the ponds, and started catching fish with them. I was like, what the heck? So, got, of course, like now with the marabou, different bucktails, I've got an absolute, like, tub full of deer tails behind me, all my chenilles. Um, I've got pretty much any color, anything you want, feather-wise. Um, started playing around, now I'm into the UV resin. I upgraded to this rotary vise, which is a huge advantage. And then now we got, just practice. Tie some stuff and then take it to the lake and it doesn't work. 
kind of scrap that idea and tie some more stuff and take it to the lake and see what works and what doesn't. This one right here goes pretty good together. Got the green and that's a 64th ounce uh, on a number eight Mustad Skipjack. It's a Mustad Skipjack sickle hook. But that purple's got a ton of flash in it. That would be a very, very good crappie bait. Especially if the water's dingy. Flip this around here. Um, how do I do it? I don't got this all messed up. Does that make it look? All right, anyway. Resin jig, pretty cool. All right, where'd I learn? Just booked a trip to the other side of the world to chase the world record largemouth bass with two of my best buddies. We have intel of numerous bass over 17 pounds being caught with no electronics. Said it. And already got us a Ford facing sonar over there too. Come on, June. Josh Jones. Oh, yeah. Booked a trip to the other side of the world. I have no idea. You want to like Japan? Other side of the world? They got crazy bass over there, I know, but Josh Jones. I don't know what. I know that's a hint or something. <laughs> I know who Josh Jones is. He's going to Japan. Are you going to? What? You booked a trip to June in June? With two of my best buddies. That's insane, dude. That is so exciting. What the heck? What are you doing, Dill? Oh, he's it's in there. Your caterpillar's in there. No, no, that's his quote. Ford facing sonar over there waiting to. Oh, I got you. All right, Josh Jones is going to Japan. Dang it. <laughs> Dude, I was excited for you, Travis. I thought you and two of your buddies were heading to Japan to chase world record largemouth bass. There's world records in Japan? Yeah, that's probably the world record. Or actually, the world record's from Georgia, I think. But they catch huge bass in Japan. I'd be scared. Oh, no electronics. That's crazy. You'd be scared to go to Japan. That's nuts. Josh Jones. That dude's insane. 22 pounders, not verified. The one out of, oh, out of Georgia. Yeah. I would go to Japan before I go to Mexico. Yeah. You know, Mexico, I think, is pretty rough down there. I do in North Carolina or Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, come on over to Arkansas.
North Carolina or Tennessee, yeah. I've been, just not for long. <laughs> I'd go to Texas. Oh, in pursuit of bass, yeah, Texas. Texas or Florida. I was just talking about just some perch jerking here in Arkansas with me would be fun. Also, I don't blame you. Drive a thousand miles to go perch jerking. That's about what, all we're good at, though. <laughs> we could catch a few bass, but I could cheat and find some live, some crappie with a live scope. Saying a lot coming from an Oki. <laughs> okay. We all know where some bigs are. Just see if we can get them. That live scope is crazy. It's really pretty insane. What size graph did your, uh, was it your uncle, I guess? I can't remember. Well, we've only got a nine inch, which is like kind of the bare minimum. I forgot to hang these UV jigs up on the edge of the bowl. Actually, I'm gonna hang them up right here on this. Hang them up on the arm of my vice there. That way they're not. They're a little bit tacky still. Um, especially whenever uh, whenever you first cure them, they're still a little bit, almost not sticky, but just if the feathers touch the body, it'll kind of stick a little bit. And then we, we'll cure them, you know, let them hang for, you, overnight, you're good, you know, you let them hang that long. Not 100%, probably about the same. He talks about it a little at the beginning. Okay, cool. I like it. I like the scan a dock, see a fish, and then fish it. Don't move to another. Yeah. It is a huge time saver as far as not just fishing dead water, but at the same time, I have seen one fish and thrown at it, and it ended up being like a bass. Bass are bad about just laying on the bottom and just ambushing something to, real quick to eat. Well, I've seen one roaming throw at it and let my jig get down to it or let whatever I'm using get down to it. And as soon as that thing gets close and it comes after it, like four or five more will come off of the bottom that you would never have seen. And then all of a sudden there's like five fish fighting over your jig. So if there's bass hugged to the bottom, you're going to miss them. If you're just scanning and not casting. What I do, or what I like doing a lot is just being able to see exactly where my lure's at. And being able to like pull my jig, even if I don't see a fish, know that I'm keeping it low enough in the water column that if something's at the bottom, it's going to trigger a bite. And as soon as you see it come up, then it's game over. Then you just throw at it until, until it eats. But just kind of convincing it to show itself off the bottom and give up its ambush point long enough for you to mark it. 
as soon as you see it, you just throw at it until it eats. With that uh, 73 SV on my kayak, seven inch screen. I'm looking to get a bigger screen. Does the 73, oh, well, I mean, I know it is. I've seen you using live scope. I was gonna say, I didn't know if the 73 SV was compatible with live scope or not, but I've seen you have it, so I guess it is. We've got the 93 SV, so it's not, you know, two inches. Pretty big difference screen wise, but especially when you move up to like a 13 or a 15 or now like nbt marines got the destroyers and the battleships i think the destroyers a 17 inch graph and the nbt marine battleship i believe is a 22 inch graph it's absolutely insane i think like um tyler real and matt robertson seth fighter i think they've all got the destroyer on their boats which is nuts 22 inch screen on the front of a on the front of a boat is pretty crazy but Good, quit. um i was still first from the back could look up there and see what was on the screen slightly time to i like the hey there's fish over that way i cast it and i caught it yep So you wasn't as much back there actually watching your jig fall as you was just kind of letting it casting where you knew that there was fish at. That's cool. Is your phone system not working? Right now? Yeah. Why? Well, I don't know. Are you on the Wi-Fi? I am now. I'm recording me. Turn your phone off and back on. No. Oh, it's I got it. Okay, I was going to say, turn your phone back off and on, because mine was acting weird after we got back from Oklahoma. Matt Robertson did me wrong today on my fantasy. He zeroed? Ouch. He zeroed? On him, Matt Robertson. <laughs> the ugly stick sponsored guy with long hair that you don't care too much for. No, it was Bassmasters. Oh. Maybe one day I'll get to run the front of his boat. If not, I need one on my boat. Um, uh, what? Maybe boat works. Don't quote me. I don't know what fishing website it was, but they had the 93 SV bundle with like the GT54 transducer, which is garmin side imaging down imaging 2d sonar all that um transducer not live scope but it was just their side imaging transducer the nine inch so the 93 sv and the gt54 transducer on sale for like 650 which is a super good deal because i think when sophie and i bought ours we got ours at 650 and that's like the lowest i've ever seen them and then you have to buy the, we just run an LVS 32 on our live scope pan optics. We don't run the newest, newest stuff. So I don't have the 34 yet or really plan on it. The 32 is fine for what we do. So let's see. I just realized that was the third one of those. We'll save that for another day. Swap colors. Um,
Maybe one day I'll get to run the front of his boat. If not, I'll need one. Oh, yeah. But they're a lot of fun, for sure, to mess with. About what? They had a knockout round. Who? The one period oh. left to climb yeah. to the top ten and make it into the Bass Boat Club to Bass Boat Four. So the leaderboard is Justin. Mm hmm. How do you say it? Con Connell. Okay. Marshall Robinson and Alton Jones Jr. Number three. I don't recognize some of those people, but we got a uh, Jacob Wheeler's kid. You recognize Jacob Wheeler's name? Yeah, that's the one I recognize. All right. Which one has the long hair? You said. Matt Robertson, but you're looking at Major League Fishing. You're looking at Major League Fishing. Oh, okay. Matt's Bassmaster. Oh, that's right. Okay. All right, green. That's a 240. That's a 140. Let's see. I got a green. I'm going to tie a kind of a flashy green Chanel on. So let's see what kind of. Let's put like some chartreuse bucktail. But use some of the brown too. I don't know if Papaw is still here or not. I'll wait and see if he is. I'll go ahead and say, um, tell everybody, uh, their Arkansas Game and Fish Commission just released, finally made it public. We've known about it for a month and haven't really been able to talk about it. I think it's February. Screen record. Should go through soon, yeah. Yeah, I'll watch it for sure. Yeah, I've just seen it. I think we've known since like February, whenever, yeah. Anyway, um, they are draining one of our lakes that is like 10 minutes from our house. So we're going to be covering that hard. So that'll be pretty awesome. I want to do at least weekly, if not, I'm 100% going to do weekly updates of the lake video-wise for y'all, for everyone on YouTube. But it is the lake where our state record, I'm talking about the Arkansas state record black crappie is out of this lake. Yeah, man, they're draining that thing. So I'm really excited. Um, it's going to be some very, very much needed improvements to the lake. Um, it's got a leaking dam. They're going to repair and fix the boat ramp really nice. Gonna add a little courtesy dock, which is really nice for loading and unloading your boat. Um, 
upgrading the fishing pier. Yeah, repairing the structure. Of course, that's the main, that's, you know, reason number one. Repairing the leaking, leaking spillway gate. That's well, pretty awesome. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited they finally made it public and we can talk about it. Um, they're going to pull the plug on her April 1st. So, or August 1st. August 1st. Going to pull the plug. A little chartreuse jig while we were talking about it. Little guy ought to get ate up in the creek for sure. Let's tie another one. Just like it. It won't be just, just like it. That's the part about hand ties is they're not all going to look absolutely exactly the same, but we'll make them look as close as we can. See, look at that. Talking about having cut my thread and jinxed it. Also, I always use a Danville 210 denier, and this is a Vivas power thread in a 140 that has very, very little thread left. I was trying to use up this thread. Oh, let's see. That's the difference between Canadians and Americans. You guys invest big money in stocking and fishery improvements. Canadian spends very little on both. Oh, man. Our dam is on its 60-year mark this year. They gave it 60-year survival rate. Over a 20,000-acre lake. See, ours is only 200 acres. So it's a tiny, tiny lake. I mean, it's... You know, <laughs> I don't know how, what that is, a half mile square. Let's see, a quarter mile is 40 acre. A quarter mile square is 40, so, yeah, it ain't very big. A half mile square would be 160 acres, I think, if I'm thinking about that right. Of course, it's not perfectly square, but. You get the drift. Been that way for years. That's a shame because that's such a good pastime, good investment, I think, for the government, for the funding of, you know, fishery. I mean, it's pretty, pretty critical. I think they said, they estimated this is going to be about a $1.4 million project, which is super, super cool. Of course, the fishing will be horrible for, for a while, but our biggest lake in Virginia. I'm going to copy fishing that way up in the top of the lake at the back, Blackwater River. Nice. Well, the payback in the recreation is millions and millions. Oh, yeah, for sure. It withdraws a lot of, because we have a lot of really clear water stuff around here. Uh, not necessarily that lake, because there is no recreational as far as tubing or anything like that, nothing like that's allowed in that lake. I mean, there's no signs against it, but it's nothing but stumps. So, I mean, obviously, you're not going to be ripping around your big motor out there. So, <coughs> it's a um, big stump flat, flooded timber. You have 400 subs? What's up, Logan? That's awesome, man. Congratulations on that. That's awesome for that $11 billion bridge project. Whoa, that's a lot of 
a lot of moolah for sure. 400 subs, growing like a weed. Yeah, for sure. You're welcome. I want to say I remember when either you started your channel or you had like 20. Referring to money made in tackle tournaments, lodging. Oh, yeah. Gas everything yeah there's definitely a lot of money associated with it yeah they're um i feel like canada of course should have like crystal clear water i know a lot of guys from around here go up north for some of like the mountain um mountain fish and stuff for smallmouth of course it's southern canada you know not too far north of the border, but 11 subs, yeah. Yeah, I remember when you just started. Oh, when my dad moved to this area, he had to learn how to fish all over again because of the water clarity, yeah. Yeah, the old, you know, orange and chartreuse spinner baits don't, don't work as good here as they do on the, in the Sabine River or something something down south Louisiana here it's a lot more natural looking buggy or you know shad colored stuff does really well further north the clear cleaner for sure south is hugely populated yeah That little guy. Make one more here and roll on. Maybe there's enough thread left on the spool. But this will be the last jig on this uh, on this spool of thread for sure. I'm gonna try to do it with just as few wraps as possible <laughs> but still hold the jig together he asleep mm. they don't get quiet over do what you feeling pretty sleepy too starting to warm up oh yeah it's getting warm um we're looking at 75 ish you know now but next weekend it's gonna be like 59 for the high i think 58 smith mountain lake wow looking at a tree sitting in the water off the boat and your grass is 18 to 20 foot dang that's that's crazy it ain't like that here i mean it ain't that clear. We can get, you know, on the furthest parts of like Lake Washita, where it's, you know, 60,000 acres, whatever lake, you can find, you know, eight, 10 foot, 20 foot visibility, but, or not 20, eight or 10, probably eight, 10. But I've never seen no 20 foot, that's nuts. Oh yeah, absolutely perfect for sure. Tonight was prom night in town. We was at the college pond fishing and all these people dressed up were showing up. Was like, oop, we gotta get out of here. We're gonna get, get caught up in traffic. So we parked around on the other side of the pond Smith Mountain Lake. Get up in Blackwater is barely visible. Another lake can't see a foot. That's my juice. 
Oh yeah, you like fishing in the dirt, no muddy water. These guys are used to them farm ponds. Old muddy water lake fishing, fishing like a farm pond. You can still catch them. I like a farm pond too. That's where the biggins are at there. Y'all can have that 20 foot visibility and give me a buzz bait across a, a farm pond. They like the brights. Oh yeah, and you like the brights, yeah, for sure. I just have no confidence in something bright for a bass, I mean, bass fishing. Crappie's different, something like this I would throw for a crappie, but just a little, little squeaker. There's a little bit of thread left on here. Boy, it ain't much. I mean, you can see that's all, all this is bare spool. That's down to the plastic. It's just a little bit down there on that end. Great hanging out with you guys. All right, Carney man, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for hanging out tonight. I'll make you a little moderator in, up in here. You can pick up any of the other channels you see or whatever. And uh, thank you for hanging out with me tonight. And enjoy the rest of your weekend as well. And hope we'll see you on the next one. It for me. All right, you out too, Logan? Sounds good. Yeah, it's getting late. Oh, 11 o'clock. So hope you have a good night as well, man. Congratulations on 400 subs. That's exciting. For sure. Pretty cool stuff. Hope y'all both have a good evening. All right. Let's find us a new color here. Gold. And that brown. I think that's going to be a little bit too big. Orange. Put some, something orange on there. Orange body with a... Where's that rubber legs? Bedtime, midnight here. Enjoyed an hour. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate it so much. Hope you have a good evening, and we'll catch you on the next one. They're dropping like flies, people. <laughs> hey, Stacy. Get some rubber legs off of here. How you doing, Stacy? You having a good evening? Are you at work tonight?
need to find the middle of all of us and meet there. That would be awesome. I'm down for it. Fishing New Lake. That would be so much fun, man. I don't know what, uh, the middle for me, just me and you, or, so it's me, you, and I think Stacy in here right now. Illinois, yeah. We could all meet at like Dale Hollow. Isn't that like northern Tennessee? He is, yeah. He passed out. Yep. He's asleep. Travis has a premiere coming out. Yep, on Tuesday. I'm going to be there with my bells on. Indiana. That's right. One state north of Kentucky. With a family far from rolling in the money. You know that song? It's called Indiana's Angel or something. Great day of crappie fishing with my uncle. A lot of bass and a sunfish too. Multi-species day. I'm excited to see it. I love catching anything on crappie gear. It's just a blast. Can you Google, oh, never mind. She's passed out. <laughs> Caught more fish than I ever spent than anything else this year. See a few of them. Some of the hook keeper staples broke, but they still fish great. That's awesome, man. They look so good. Those underspins you rigged up look awesome. Underspin you haven't tried yet?
I'm not gonna push my luck on the, on another another jig with this thread. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and wad it up. Get me get me a new spool here. What I'll do is mess around and run out in the middle of a jig and really be cooked. Check this little dude out. If I can hold it to where y'all can see it good. Little rubber legs. Flared out pretty uniform around the old hook there. Send you a few. I'm not sure if I have editors or not. That's awesome. Heck yeah. <laughs> Oh, send me a few of them. Oh. Oh, dude, heck yeah. I thought you were talking about just send me a picture of them. Some of the hook keeper staples broke, but they still fish great. Oh, dude, heck yeah. I would use them for sure. That's awesome. I just realized what you said. When he said, when you said I'd send him some too, I was like, what? Who else is he sending them to? And Donna, me, me, that's cool. Yeah, I'd for sure use them. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you. get sent out Monday oh no rush man yeah no rush at all I appreciate it I'll email you there you go They're both passed out. Oh, another lake in town that I go to on the kayak a lot. It's right in town. Um, they closed the ramp off because a bunch of dope heads went down there and was doing dope and left a bunch of trash and stuff around and the people that own it were like oh, okay well they ruined it for everybody because they used to let us let everybody cross their property to get to the lake lake access and then there was a little dirt ramp and stuff there it was perfect for kayaks and john boats gated off now makes me so mad that people can't makes me mad people are doing dope anyway i hate it but then they just go and ruin something that 
ruin it for everyone, the entire community. It's a great lake. Little 80 acre lake was perfect for kayaks and John boats and really like people who don't have a big bass boat. It's a perfect lake for them to go out on. Easy to catch sunfish. There's loaded with sunfish and there's crappie and bass and catfishing and now it's just pfft, no more because people can't put their crack needles in the car before they leave and they got to leave them laying out on the ground so anyway they ruined it love that little snacky swimmer on it picked up some bobby garlands and all these for a dollar 99 couldn't pass that up no couldn't pass it up either Man, I've got a fishing kit, and I've got, like, some footage of me walking into Ollie's um, that I'm, I'm going to make, like, a Ollie's fishing video one of these days. But Yeah, $1.99 is cheap. Another one of those little rubber leg crazy jigs. It does suck. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty upset about it. We'd heard they closed. They were gonna close it. So we went out there and looked at it today, and sure enough, there's a gate across it. Says private property, and they actually cut a bunch of trees down and fell it across the road. That used to go down to the lake and everything. Well. <clears throat> One bad apple ruins it for the whole the whole community. I'm sure there was more than one person, but just that gum. People suck. I think that's the main thing is just people suck. Tried out the Guggen Snacky Swimmer. Yep. I like them a lot. They're a good bait. Looks great in the water, and you were tearing up some smallies on it. Heck, yeah. They did tear up really bad for us as far as um, they're not, like, super durable, but... I mean, a soft plastics, you can't expect it to last forever. And there, I was using the Guggen jig heads as well, Guggen 16th ounce jig heads. And uh, they were good. They just kind of, the bait keeper, which is not a bad thing. <coughs> it's a wire bait keeper. So every time you go to change colors, it completely shred the bait, which is, a, I mean, it's doing its job. <coughs> doing its job is keeping the bait on there, but at the same time, it's like, man. Can't even change baits without it just absolutely shredding it. Small... Great small paddle tail. I like the 2.8s, but they're slightly on the bigger side for the underspins. 
But you did catch a smaller bass on it. Yeah, softer plastics tear up quick. Great action in the water. Reminded me of Kytec swim baits. Yeah, I like Kytec a lot. That's a really good brand. Um, Kytec has some really good, good swim baits for sure. They're just like you said, they're not durable at all. Kytex are definitely not durable. But <laughs> thank you. breathe on one wrong it fell apart and I brush my teeth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're definitely uh they're definitely uh fragile. And they stink. They got that squid scent, some of them. They actually have a lot more product than I thought that they had. On like the Kitech website. Get that all untangled and then a little rubber legged rubber leg guy. Nothing crazy, just Pretty nifty. Just looking at one ripped itself apart. Yeah, it does. Well, that's all my little jigs for tonight, y'all. I got some bigger ones here I can tie. I want to tie some. Always made them short, like a crappie tube. Yeah. I got two big jigs here. Let's tie those and that's going to be it for me tonight. I want to put some rubber legs on a big crappie jig and see how they react um, to it on live scope. I'll use this coffee chenille for it. All right, let's see. Always made them short, yeah. The contacts. Good night. All right, Mom, good night. Love you. Hope you have a good, good evening. Thank you for hanging out tonight with me. We'll catch you on the next one. Or see you before then, I'm sure. piece of this gold and cut it all up here. Put that on there. Just give a little bit of color under the rubber. <laughs> Met up with another YouTuber. He tears up the panfish on the Nico caddisfly. 
Haven't had any luck on the white ones. Met another YouTuber. Well, daggum. Did you collaborate with him? Make a video? Do we know this guy? SB Fishing. I do not watch SB Fishing. Never heard of it. Pretty good channel. Not yet. He lives in Indy. Uh, lives in Andy. Way on up there. All right. Nice guy. He's Canadian. And it's not Terry. Has he got a big channel? Just working on his hours. Oh, yeah. I got you. SB Fishing. Y'all met at Angler's Choice in January. Been following him a while. Uh, it is local Virginia. John Boat and Bass Boat Tournaments. Towards Upper Virginia. Some at Smith Mountain Kerr, North Carolina. I'd like to go fish with him one day. Bunch of fat fingers. Oh, it's all good, man. We figure it out. If not, I'll ask. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Okay. No, I'll have to check him out. It'd definitely be cool for you to collab and meet up with somebody. Um, I seen that dude, uh, 
I don't even know his name. He's from your area. He bought a new boat there. The He's got the Yen 10. But I can't think of his real name or what his channel name is. Yen? Ryan? Ryan Yen or something? Actually, that short guy. Oh, the one in the, uh, in the picture. Okay, cool. The guy, anyway, the dude that's got the Yen 10. Fisher Yen. Yeah, that's right. He's from around your area too, huh? Or at least went to Angler's Choice and bought his new boat there. He got a brand new Tracker Pro Team 170, I believe. Or, no, it's not a Pro Team. It's just a Tracker Pro 170. Check out that little jig. It's an eighth ounce. A rubber leg. That flash underneath it. What do you think? I think it's gone forever. There she is. I think that'll get eight. I think it'll get eight. Get eaten. I think so. Hopefully. We'll uh, for sure be trying it. Tie one more of them, then I'm going to go to bed. Get them all upstairs to bed. 11.30. Plus my knees are starting to... Stretched out. Oh. Hey, Schwartz. Choice, the biggest boat deal on the East Coast. Three locations. Oh. One in Virginia and two in North Carolina. Okay. I thought there was only one. Good looking jiggy. Thank you. Definitely getting bit. I hope. <laughs> I'm going to try to wiggle it in somebody's face. A little live scope. One more. I think you did get it from the Martinsville location in Virginia. Not sure where it's from. Ain't no telling, man. I like how he always has the Bible verse of the day in his videos. That's really, really cool. He always starts off with that verse of the day. Pretty awesome. Uh, these are still those must add skipjack, uh, must add skipjack hooks, but I'm now will be, once I get all these burned up and used, I will be all victory, all victory. I've got a Hey Dude box full of victory hooks that are just waiting to be used. I've sent them out to several guys and got got several opinions on them from guys who crappie fish a lot and uh, I've gotten them in the hands of a lot of people and everyone likes them so far so and had no complaints on the hook they're st sticky sharp the only complaint I had was from a uh, a guy, he said, the only problem I've got with them is any time that I even, like, brush, you know, touch a log, it's buried. Like, completely stuck. Just just gone. He's like, it's so sharp that they just stick. It's like, a fish just swims by and it's caught. It's pretty funny, but... Oh, no, yeah, I don't use Arky stuff, for sure. 
always great to spread the word. Something I fail to do at times. Absolutely. Always willing to help. Lend help to someone in need. Man, that's awesome there. That's the biggest part of it. For sure. I'm just going to put all these legs on this one. It's going to be way too much leg for this jig, but that'll be all right. Getting leggy with it, yep. Put that batch on there and then put another one over it. these all separated out a lot of problems with the arky sickle hooks i'm a victory i was all mustad just because that was kind of the the hook that is recommended with the do it molds but then i quickly found out that you can use it doesn't have to be the hook that's recommended it's just showing you the shape of the hook that's recommended. Like Eagle Claw makes a 570 or 575. This is a 32,500 series hook from Mustad. Um, I use the, I think it's 111 or 11798s from Victory now. Just a bunch of code shape identifiers. Just a 90 degree bend sickle hook. It doesn't have to be a sickle hook. You can use a J. I just like the sickle because it seems like your fish stay pinned a lot better. There's a little smaller gap between the point of the hook and the shank on a sickle hook period just because of the way the sickle shape is compared to like an Aberdeen or something, but I like the increased not losing a fish. And I don't feel like I miss many anyway, just even just off of strikes. I don't feel like we miss many fish. Especially with the sharpness of a victory hook, it, um, it hits them, they're stuck. Getting leggy with it, yep. Yeah, Mr. Dave at Double Hook Angling says getting jiggy with it. I'm getting leggy with it. I get stuck with a dull hook, yeah. Earlier they were talking about what hook sharpener, you know, do it does everybody recommend what what hook sharpener do you recommend stacy i know i've seen you sharpening your hooks before do you have like a die hard gotta be this brand type shook har shook harpener hook sharpener or is it um if you're like me it's just whatever hook sharpener you see at the store and just grab it and go you like wet rock? 
wet rock. I'll have to look them up. Anything I can find. Been using the same one for a long time. Okay. Is Wet Rock the brand name or is it just drag the tip? Oh, you just use like a wet rock. Okay, I see what you're saying. Oh, you seen us talking about the hook sharpeners? Okay. I didn't know if you were in here yet or not for that. Just a stone, yeah. Oh, you use it work. I got you. Well, thank you for tuning in. Even while you're at the work. Just stone. Okay, yeah. Old knife sharpener. Just drag the tip three or four times on each side, and that dull hook will prick you. Nice. for bass a little bit a little bit bulky for a crappie may take a pretty good sized crappie to eat that one who knows if one's hungry enough might eat it uh -uh. Well, guys, I think I'm going to wind her down. Get off here and carry Dylan upstairs. I'd eat it if I was a slab. <laughs> Don't have much problem with jigs. Oh, yeah, but catfish hooks. Makes sense. All right, y'all. Well, I'm going to get off here and uh, get the family in bed and it's uh 11 42 so we almost made it to midnight but anyway hope you all have a great night and we'll try to get us a video out here in the next few days i gotta edit edit some but um get one out before long we'll see y'all on our next adventure <laughs>